Hey Raptors, welcome back to the Hatch Raptor YouTube channel. Quick video today, I'm going to be showing you the 1660 Super mining results on Raven using T-Rex Miner. Um, I'm also going to update you on a few other things. Today the 1650 Super launched. So at the time of recording, it's out here on NVIDIA's website. And if you go to Shop All, it looks like Newegg, the same thing happened uh, last time with the 1660 Super. Newegg got the uh, inventory to sell first. So probably tonight or tomorrow, uh, definitely by the time you watch this, you should see the other retailers like Amazon and uh, anywhere else you may order from. It looks like around 159 to 169, depending on what your brand preference might be. I know a lot of folks like the MSI cards. Uh, it's one of my favorites as well. Uh, EVGA is one of my favorites. I really like the 1660 that we're doing testing with here today. And they're both at that 159 price point. Uh, those are probably my two favorites, MSI and EVGA. A gigabyte following behind that. And then kind of going on down the down the list from there. But let's take a quick look at the images. It looks very, very similar to the 1660 Super. And I was worried that it may not have this backplate, but it does. You can see it's got the same backplate that I showed in the unboxing of that 1660 Super video. And just a quick reminder on the specs, this upgrade on the 1650 Super is completely different than the 1660 Super upgrade in that really with the 1660 we just got the memory bump, but here we've got the Turing architecture, we've got the boost clock at 1725 megahertz, we've got GDDR6 memory, so we've got a bump up there from GDDR5, and our memory speed increased to 12 gigabits per second. Now, because of the price point on this card, I'm very curious to see uh, how it does on mining. I'm thinking of pulling the trigger on one of these to do some testing to see if it makes sense to build a rig out of. But, um, you know, when you look at four gigabytes of memory on a graphics card, especially with mining profits down now, it's hard to take just another risk on a graphics card, but it's just so tempting at this price point. 159 and all of the nice uh, bumps that we got in this generation, I might uh, pick up one for science and do some testing on. Uh, just to see just to see if it's uh, worthwhile to play around with and one other quick update i wanted to throw out the reason i've been a little bit delayed here is we just always got something going on we finally got the electrical installed in the mining cave shed so i'm going to be doing a video on that real soon stay tuned you're going to see huge updates coming here in the near future I had to do my own trenching and a bunch of other stuff over this past week with uh, all of my free time, so that's why I didn't get videos out. But it'll be uh, it'll be pretty cool when I'm able to update you guys and show you everything that's going on there. So, but back to what we're here for today, which is Raven. Now I want to show you guys what I did here. So I'm running T-Rex version 0.14.6, and I did a slight modification here. I'm using the web interface, so if you use the loopback address, 127.0.0.1, and it'll show you this when you first um, begin mining with, uh, with T-Rex in Windows. Uh, you can actually hit that address, that loopback, and you get a graphical interface. And this is where you can do some alterations to the way it reports data, because it's so difficult to get a grasp on, you know, with X16R, we've got, now with V2, we've got 17 different algorithms that this is switching to. So your hash rate is going to change fairly significantly from, you know, hour to hour. So I think it makes a lot of sense to at least get a, a running average of one hour. And what I did is I switched this to a 24 hour rolling average. So in the web interface here, um, you can see here my hash rate per minute is 15.12 mega hash per second per hour is 16.28 and per day is 15.79, although I'm gonna tell you in just a second, this is the more accurate hash rate that you wanna look at here. 15.91 is what I've gotten over the past day. And my up time has been one day, 37 minutes. I'm going on 38 minutes there. So just over one day, I've been letting this bake to make sure I get a good representation here. Now I wanna show you the settings I've got. So with Raven, I other than just testing, 
I, I really don't ever play around with the core clock and the memory. And on the 1660 Super, if you do that, um, especially with T-Rex and some of these other miners, you're, you're going to crash going to crash your rig more than likely, or at least the miner. So I'm running this with a plus zero, plus zero, and a power limit of 73%. And you might ask why 73%? Well, the reason was, is for this first test, this 24 hour test, I wanted to get a good look at a power limit of 90 Watts. And if I set this power limit, um, to 73%, my wattage on the card, my power on the card, is staying at 90, 90 and above, about 90, 91. So I just wanted to make sure sometimes these cards, there's a little bit of a trip wire there. If you hit a certain threshold, you get better performance. So I wanted to make sure I was at that 90 or above wattage for this test. And within the GUI here, what I did is I set my hash rate average and if we look down in here, this is the JSON output of that. There we go. So my hash rate average is set to 86,400, and that's seconds. So there's 86,400 seconds in a day. Uh, and the graph, it does pull up uh, a day hash rate on its own once you cross over the hour mark, it starts tracking this. But what I found is if you set this hash rate average uh, manually, it's actually pulling directly from the miner. And while they're both very similar, both very close hash rates, this one appears to be pulling, it's not pulling its data from the miner. I think it's pulling from a calculation uh, through the graph, through the data that's been put in into the graph, and then it's outputting this. So this is your accurate uh, reading right here for the past day on our 1660 Super. And you can see here we're at 15.91 mega hash per second. Hey guys, so real quick, I wanted to share this on T-Rex. I posted in their Discord some questions about the data that I was seeing here. So for example, what the blue line meant, what the gray area meant, because there's not, there's not a key or anything like that here. And uh, which one was more accurate? This one, number one, or number two here? And how to make sure I'm setting this up properly. And I got um, an answer I wanted to just read to you guys. It says, at Hashraptor, hello. The first one, so this line that we were pulling our readings from, is more accurate. It's based on more granular data, about 60 samples per minute, and your setup size, about 86,400 samples in your case. The second is based on lazy calculations. Our average is based on 60 samples, which are an average for every minute within an hour. The day average is based on 24 samples, which are an average for every hour. So basically it takes the average once an hour for 24 hours. So you can see why that's a little bit more of a, as they put it, lazy calculation. And the blue line on the plot represents the hash rate history. And the gray area under the blue line represents power consumption history. So if we came back over here, we could see this blue line. This is what I was saying why I thought this would be a little bit higher although it turns out the efficiency is really good. You can see that average falling here on the blue line until it comes down here and reaches our 14.23 uh, mega hash per second. So just a little bit to help you out if you're using T-Rex or if you want to use this in the future and you want to see how well Raven's doing instead of just firing it up and letting it go if you want to try to get a little bit more granular. Maybe that'll help, maybe it won't, I don't know. If you've got any other suggestions, I'd love to learn from you guys. If you've got a way that you calculate Raven, for performance on a daily or weekly, monthly basis, uh, leave that in the comments. Definitely let me know. Okay, so my first test here, like I said, we're at uh, core and memory of zeros. The power limit's at 73. And our mega hash per watt at 15.9 mega hash per second and 90 watts. Our heats continue to stay really uh, acceptable as it does with most of these 16 series cards. Uh, it's pushing 59 degrees with a fan percentage of 57%. And we're at 0 0.1757. So that's pretty good mega hash per watt when we're looking at efficiency. It certainly is much better than a lot of the older cards that we've seen. But uh, what we want to do is try to tackle, get as close as we can to this best result we saw with the 1660 Ti. And you can see here I got a 0 0.218. That was my best output there. And then uh, one of the Reddit users that's got um, 
one of the initial posts on the performance of the 1660 Ti was at 0.20. So anything up here close to 0.2, you're starting to split hairs, um, especially when you're talking about Raven. You've got to make sure that you've got a good test criteria set up to capture this data here. So what I want to try to do is see if I can get this anywhere close to the 0 0.19, 0 0.2 range with this. So the next thing I'm going to do here for our next test is I'm going to grab this power limit and we are going to drop this to 56%. Apply that. And you can see our power consumption has dropped to 68, 70 watts, 69 watts. So we'll let this bake a little bit here. I'll update you guys and let you know. So let me get this uh, restarted and let's get a new uh, count going here so we can take a look at, uh, at how this card's performing at this new power limit. Okay, Raptors, I am back. And I decided to go ahead and wait almost a full day here. You can see we're at uh, close to a day. We're at 21 hours, 19 minutes. And I got to say, this is a little interesting. I didn't expect. Uh, we're actually trending down on our daily average for the 1660 Super here on Raven. And you can see here uh, we are at 14.22 mega hash per second for the full day average here. And for quite a while, this was upwards of 15, 16 mega hash per second. If I had only run this for an hour, uh, or certainly less, I would have gotten some readings that wouldn't really have been accurate. Guys, you can see after a full day here, or almost a full day, 14.22 mega hash per second. 56% on the power limit, plus zero, plus zero. I didn't mention this earlier, driver version, we're on 441.12 and afterburner 4.6.2. In certain circumstances, that matters. But uh, yeah, so let's, uh, let's take a look at what this means for the overall efficiency. Okay, so I'm going to grab my efficiency spreadsheet here and let's change this to, all right, 56% on the power limit and mega hash per watt. We'll figure that out in just a moment. Okay, so let's grab our average, 14.22, and our power. Oh, I did want to show you one thing I did this time around that would help with accuracy. So on Tech Power Up uh, GPU Z, I came over here to the power consumption wattage, and I set this as an average since I knew I was going to be running this for 24 hours instead of watching it bounce every second to about three different points. So you can see that this is stable here. I'm gonna do this moving forward. So we're getting 69.5 watts after almost a day. That's our average. So let's go ahead and put that in. And look at that, guys. 0 0.2046. Okay, that is higher than I thought it was gonna be. When I saw this 14.22, I honestly thought we'd be in the 0.18 range without doing any good math in my head. Our temperature is 53 degrees Celsius, fans at 54, 54%, 53. Every now and then people ask me about heat, so I go ahead and make sure I capture that. Okay, interesting, very interesting results, guys. We saw that this did really well on Ethereum, and from an efficiency standpoint for Ravencoin, actually pretty darn good. I thought I'd be closing this video out saying that this wasn't a, a Ravencoin card. Darn, from that efficiency standpoint, maybe it is. Again, from if efficiency is what you're going for, uh, and I'm paying about 11 cents per kilowatt hour US here. Uh, so I'm a, probably somewhere in the middle of what people are paying all over the place, all around the world. I know some people have better rates than that. I've talked to folks that are non-business that get about um, eight cents, and then I've six to eight cents, and then I've heard other residential folks in distant lands saying that they're eighteen, nineteen cents per kilowatt hour, and it makes it pretty difficult for them to mine. But from an efficiency standpoint, guys, look at that zero point two zero, pretty uh, pretty impressive. I'm debating that sixteen fifty supercard. Let me know. I, I put a tweet out on it. Let me know if you think I should pick that up and see if there's any surprises like this. I'm going to keep doing algorithm testing here. 
uh, on this card for different algorithms. If you've got other algos you want to see, please put that in the comments below. Anything you want me to test with any of these cards, uh, put that in the comments below. And in coming episodes here, what you're going to see is some additional... Uh, a lot of really good stuff, guys. We finally got our electrical infrastructure in place to put out these new rig builds that we've got here. Even though crypto's down right now, uh, we've got a lot of fun stuff coming up. So stay tuned. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And we will see you guys in the next episode. All the links, all the products, everything will be below. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.